All right, guys. I got some deer drying out right now. I'm at Ray Lakes in Southern California, Sierra Nevadas. And while that gear dries, I figured I'd show you something that I realized I haven't really shown the peeps on the YouTube channel, which is my Instagram, really. But let me put this down. And that's this guy. This is the Jewel Bandit. Now, <clears throat> the Jewel Bandit is very much like the Jewel Thief. Um, I'm not calling it like a uh, the replacement to the Jewel Thief because I feel like they have the ability to fit two different like niches. Uh, but the Jewel Bandit is essentially a slim down Jewel Thief. Uh, sacrifices efficiency for weight. Let me just tie this off real quick. There we go. Now, hi guys, uh, future Tyler coming in to interdict something that he said. I just got back from my trip a couple of days ago, like two days ago. Here, I got some gear in the background drying. Um, and then yesterday I went to the beach, which is why I look like a tomato right now because uh, I wasn't very proactive on my sunscreen to keeps. Uh, so uh, I'm interdicting anyways, because I said some things in the video that I'm now watching for the first time that uh, aren't quite right, because I have two different iterations between the Jewel Thief and the Jewel Bandit, and I just got confused on which one I was talking about and which test I remembered. Uh, and so he, let me share the correct numbers with you. Uh, that way you have the correct numbers. Uh, so let's share my screen. Screen three and share. So here we go. We are looking at a uh, spreadsheet I made. I showed it off in a previous video, but if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, it's basically just a calculator for my preferred uh, metric of efficiency of a stove pot combo efficiency because it's a combination of those two um, that can that you really got to pay attention to. Uh, anyway, so the Jewel Bandit with the BRS three thousand T. Uh, we're looking at 33,788 joules of thermal energy absorbed per gram of fuel burned, uh, which is really good. Uh, it's actually pretty darn good. It's above a jet boil zip system uh, and right below a jet boil stash system. At, uh, jet boil stash is at 34,000. The jet boil zip is at 31,000. Uh, how, how does this compare with something in its weight class, like very similar in weight to it? Uh, and well, the closest thing in weight that I could come up with is a Tox 550 while, while still being a, a gas burner, you know, not like a, 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 um, a alcohol burner uh, is, but anyways, closest thing in, in weight is a Tox 550 UL um, with a BRS 3000T. And this is both in weight and volume because the Jewel Bandit is a 550 milliliter pot. Um, and so is the Tox 550 milliliter UL. Uh, and but that with a BRS is 95.15 grams. Um, and the the Jewel Bandit um, with the BRS is 91.7 grams. Uh, so it's it's actually lighter. Uh, now, how does it compare with efficiency? Well, we're looking at 24,168 uh, joules per gram absorbed with the Tox uh, and the BRS system. Uh, and then the Jewel Bandit is 33,000. So it's 32,780. Uh, so it's significantly better for less weight as well in terms of efficiency, which is really cool. Um, this is a completion of the project in my mind. This is basically the end result. Uh, I set out to make a pot that was lighter than the Tox 550 and more efficient, and I have achieved it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. So back to the video. So you guys uh, could finish hearing what I say there. Just ignore the incorrect numbers I may give you. But yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoy. Um, so it's even lighter than a Tox 550 milliliter, which is pretty cool. Uh, the main difference is the spacing on the fins. Uh, there's larger spacing. Uh, there's also a smaller ratio between the intake and the outtake um, because the intake has been shrunk, shrunken down, recessed a bit to get rid of some material. Uh, and on top of that, the 
windscreen is now perforated. Uh, I chose really, really small holes because I wanted that boundary layer to make wind getting through um, a lot harder while still reducing the weight. Uh, a potential fe <clears throat> future experiment will be to completely remove this windscreen from the design and see if I could do a thinner titanium one that like sleeves over and then clips in. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know if that'll actually save weight or not. I gotta do some cat simulations. <clears throat> and then another thing is uh, the handles. They, they've they gone from a 2.8 millimeter on the uh, Jewel Thief, and these are now 1.8 millimeter, so it's dropped a complete millimeter. They're a lot smaller. Uh, they do the trick, but they're just barely doing the trick, right? So this is for super ultralight people. Now, because it's lighter than a Tox Light 50 and more efficient than a Tox Light 50, this is always the, this is like, the pot that achieves my original goal when I started the project was to was to make something about the same weight as the Tox 550, but uh, more efficient. And that's what I finally done here. Really excited about that. Let me put this off to the side. <clears throat> and then this lid. This is just a iteration. The lids are giving me a hard time. I'm still not yet to create a lid I'm happy with, but this is the lid I'm the happiest with so far. Uh, just a little carbon fiber lid. That I've done in a 3D printed mold. Um, the bottom side is coated in, in um, uh, NFS 61 certified silicone uh, for food safety. Uh, and then it has this shock cord strap, which was inspired by Mont Moeller because I saw him do it to his jewel bandit that I, that I gave him. Um, but holds the whole system together without needing a stuff sack. Oops. Which is really neat when you're packing things away. Okay, can't do it right now for some reason, but yeah, you get the idea. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's that's the Jewel Thief, or the Jewel, the jewel Bandit. No, you've already seen the Jewel Thief. Uh, one thing I'm doing differently is, originally I had goals of putting graduation marks on the inside, just like a paint or something, but the silicone wasn't adhering to the graduation marks, and it would delaminate where the graduation marks were. Um, so now I'm just using a bamboo spoon, and I've burned the graduation marks into the spoon. I let the spoon sit at an angle like that in the pot. And then I measure the weight of the water uh, until I get exactly like one cup or, or you know, stuff like that. Because one, one milliliter of water weighs one gram. So that gives you a volume. And then I burn the level on my, the spoon. So now I have graduation marks. <clears throat> and that's been working great for this trip. And then, okay. <clears throat> so I guess I'll briefly talk about this because I have gotten questions about it um, and so I'll kind of talk about it but I don't want to go into too much detail because I really don't know what I'm talking about and there's a lot of risk involved with using something like this um, and because I'm not as educated in the physics of how pressurized gases work uh, I just really don't want to make any recommendations um, so just know that this is not something that's really safe. This is this is something you gotta do at your own risk and do your own research and decide if it's something you wanna even entertain the idea of. But this is a little field canister that you may have seen in some of my past videos. And I use it on short trips um, because it's like, it weighs just 19 and a half grams when it's empty. And, um, and if you fill it up with, you can fill it up with like 28 grams of butane. Um, and that's enough to last me for three days uh, with the efficiency of the Jewel Bandit, and about four days with the efficiency of the Jewel Thief. Uh, if I'm just cooking a dinner, one tea at night, and uh, one coffee in the morning. Um, so, you're talking about very limited amount of water vo uh, volume boiled. But it's perfect, because it, it's so much lighter than the 110 gram canisters you see from like MSR and stuff, which is the smallest available ones on the market. Uh, and it's essentially, it, well, it is, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an air horn canister. Uh, that's filled with isobutane. It's pre-filled with isobutane. That's the gas that's in it for air, for the air horn. Um, and so when you get it, it's actually ready to use on a stove. You just pop the, you unscrew the air horn top on it, and then you, you have a Linda valve, which is the same valve that a lot of the stoves use. Now, not all stoves mate to this canister because of how high this rim is, uh, but it does work on some stoves, and the BRS is one of them. Or the BRS 3000T is one of them. Uh, 
and I'll, there's a there's a there's a really extensive thread on backpacking light about the use of this fuel canister, and that's where I got all the information um, that I needed to make the decision if I was going to use this or not. Uh, but yeah, definitely go check that thread out. I'll put a link in it to it in the description. And then this is a 3D printed stand for the canister that you just insert, and it makes it a lot easier to balance uh, a pot on top of when you have a stove on top of it and stuff. Um, I didn't design this. This is designed by someone else on Backpacking Light. I'll put a link to that thread as well. Um, I just stole his idea and drew up my own version in Fusion 360 and uh, designed it so that it would fit inside the Jewel Bandit and the Jewel Thief upside down. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the gist on this little canister. Uh, it's great for heat exchanger pots because you could get the most amount of uh, advantage out of it because you could get several days of fuel off of what would normally only be literally one day from a non-heat exchanger pot um, and you save a lot of weight on the uh, on the uh, actual fuel canister itself because you're not carrying a large chunk of metal you're not really using because you have so much extra fuel in those 100 to 10 gram canisters uh, but just know there's dangers involved so read up on the threads decide if it's something you want to risk or not um, if it interests you you could try to get them here in the states uh, but they're really hard to get in Europe. So, there's that. But yeah, thought I'd show that off. And now you guys have seen. We got the Jewel Bandit. And I've showed off this guy. And that's about it. I am going to go back to enjoying a coffee. Going to heat up a coffee. And wait for the sun to come all the way out. I'm getting a lot closer. Thanks for watching, guys.